Hello everyone, this here is Andrea's Modern Mansion, the Lego friend set that cost me $200 US, but it comes with 2,275 pieces, all of which I assembled live over on my Twitch channel. The set comes with 10 mini dolls, the website says 11, but it's 10, and a car. But of course, we're going to focus on the main thing that you're paying for, which is the mansion itself. Here's a quick lay of the land just so you can see the overall shape of this. Of course, it is open around the back, but there's some decent depth to it. And the build experience of this was good. It felt nice and solid. It still feels solid now that it's done. There are not any major components of this that come apart. There are not any major components of this that open up or hinge in, in different areas, nor do the roofs come off, nor do the upper levels come off or anything like that. This is really one thing, one solid continuous house. It is built in many different sections, but it felt good the way that everything went together. Front and center is a rock face with some arid climate. You're thinking like Southern California kind of stuff. Uh, foliage on it, which totally makes sense. And it feels like they're borrowing a lot of inspiration from some of the uh, botanicals line <laughs> things that they've done in the, in the succulents and the tiny plants and such. And I think it works here. Not everybody's going to recognize the, the stuff that you're looking at, but I, I think that they did a good job here. This is also the first place that I've seen the spectrum properly used. In, in a set with the new reddish orange color. So we got the, the old orange, this is flame yellowish orange. We've got the old orange, the new reddish orange introduced in space, you know, last season, and then red, just so you can see how that ultimately fits in. And this is the garage and it has an opening door mechanism all the way around on the side. So you turn this and it opens the door for you like so, it's nice and remote. And then for extra credit, if you turn it farther, it makes the car come out because the, the floor of the garage in there has a, a lifting mechanism. So you've got kind of two stages here. Open this and then make the floor tilt forward. We'll take a look at this separately, but just the way that that works is nice and smooth. They do give you a little bit of extra room to the side so this doesn't have to be perfectly lined up. The ramp there is good. The ground clearance on this is good, so it's not getting stuck. It's easy to just back it in there. Go ahead and close this down. And then when you want it to come out, it's right there for you. Nice. They continue, though in a simplistic form, the rock face around the side here. So you can just imagine that all of this is overhanging a cliff. You got some buttresses hanging out out here. This is just showing the back of the mechani mechanism. Basically, the technique that's used here is just to keep it nice and steady and to give you the, uh, the, the bump stops so that a car being inserted in there isn't going to go too far. Speaking of going too far, I'm actually going to take you all the way back to the, the start. I wanted to show you the garage first, but I want to take you to here because this is really the entrance way. And there's a lot of interesting stuff that goes on outside before you even get inside the place. So another small garden here off to the left, and this has some ferns with the lime green color used for the foliage. It stands out. It, it's, it's a thing but it's not my personal favorite, but this does have the double wide fern leaf uh, usage here, which is which is good. And this is actually a waterfall. You'll see what that looks like from the top soon. But, you know, a nice little thing off to the side, which which has a, just a little bit of a Mediterranean inspiration to how this is arranged. And then the the walkway, it actually, this actually takes you up to the front door of the space. Again, this long walkway, walkway, walkway between rockways. This is the uh, full mailbox there with a bunch of mail in it right now, just the regular printed pieces. You get to a steeper section of stairs over here, and that's the front door. This right here, that's your main door. Outside of that, though, you've got a little lounge area. So there's a chase lounge spot there, another small uh, just kind of like a flower box, a planter box there. And then you've got the infinity pool is, is the idea of what's going on here. Infinity pool. So imagine that this is full of water and then they've got, also got a nice little, little floaty thing there so that you can, this is probably not the best clothing, but you can put somebody in there and just imagine they're just hanging around in, in the pool. Would be nicer to have actual water in there or is this you know, more of the suggestion of water, but this is actually done pretty well because you can still put more people in there. Now, not everybody's going to be able to take advantage of, you know, having the, the, the floating device there, but 
I think it works well enough for play. And you've got the ladder there for access. So, you know, it gives you a little bit more immersion and steps around the side as well to give you immersion so that you can imagine people coming in or getting out from either of those sides. Now things do get a little bit awkward around here because this is a patio, right? You've got the got the glass banister out here facing towards the the outside towards the the front of the space. And this is patio slash kitchen space. And I mean, they've got a nice setup for the 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 table there and four chairs, which are nice and low and have kind of a glass or acrylic design to them. But while it's easy enough to get figures right here, or your mini dolls right here, it's not easy to get them back there. And also, this is not connected. I mean, excuse me, it is fully connected to the inside without any separation between the inside and, and the out. So if I just go ahead and rotate this around, right? This is outside. Still outside, right? Well, I mean, there's a there's a there's a doorway here, but there's no, there's no actual door in it. And I said it's kind of like a like a like a partial kitchen because the dining room space maybe, but honestly, this is the kitchen itself. It's a little bit awkward. See, there's some some weird things that are going on here. This is the front door. We started over here. You go up those stairs, you come around here, you go you come in the front door, and then it's that's kitchen, I guess. It's kind of weird. You got a space to uh, play some piano. The piano build is very nice, including the pedals down below. It's really well done with the gold colored roller skates. And you can do some singing right there as well. Easy to get access to that space. Easy to just put a mini doll in that in that spot. And you know, they fit as well as they're going to. Really nice design for that. These are like concrete pillars holding the cantilevered section up above, but that's pretty much it for this level with the exception of the overhanging or cantilevered hot tub that's out at the corner. So you got infinity pool over here. Imagine that's full of water and you can go between that easily and quickly, which makes sense. And the hot tub, they could have been a little bit closer, but you, you know, got the little suggestions of, of the bubbles in there. Uh, just imagine that this is a waterproof phone because they're all waterproof these days, right? At least to a certain degree. So don't worry about it. What I'm doing right there. So you can put two people into that space and that's perfectly fine. I, I can't complain about that. Decent use of space. And it's nice to get the different shapes as well for the whole thing. Speaking of shaping, you know, we got the, the circular little hot tub here, lots of rectangular elements, U-shape, horizontal things, vertical things, and then also very, very strong rounded elements, curved elements. This is not a full circle here, but it comes pretty close. Nice little striation technique used through here. So it's not just completely solid. Plenty of the clear panel pieces are used throughout this. And the primary color for the windows is actually clear. So it makes it easy to see through with the exception of some little panels over here. These small panels that are actually done in trans dark pink. And to the side of that, this is one of the most exciting things for me as far as parts are concerned orange colored and especially yellow colored hello lego classic space and neo classic space original style garage door elements oh, i love those pieces and they give you a bunch of them not just in those colors but also in the trans dark pink you get four of those and then four of, of the orange and four of the yellow in total pretty nice i'm really glad to have these additional pieces made available in in the palette and then this whole section over here is angled out so it doesn't just follow the 90 degrees or the curves you know this whole cantilevered upper section so that's pretty nice just generally there is a lot of architectural sensibility that was used in this building it really feels like a, a period piece feels like it it's accurate to the style that it's going for this is andrea's bedroom and she's got the the curved corners of the bed which helps it to be able to rotate around fully and i like this i mean it's maybe it's a little bit cheesy and a little bit a little bit dated but it makes it so that you can put you know a mini doll on it it's got a there's a gift right here right now a gift box has a a, a a tile with a sticker on the top but you can put a mini doll on there and then reorient her around and just imagine that she's going to sleep looking at the sunset through that window or something inside of this is just a heart single height a heart tile got some glass elements here uh, 
kitschy kind of uh, torsier. And then this is a spot for the parakeet, the pet parakeet, to be living with the uh, nice uh, unique color, I believe, and uh, print on that one. The Friends style, kind of the, the Tweety Bird style. And, and this is a very effective little, little planter potter. Good use of space there. Some nice small details. Here you see some of the use of, of stickers, which is you know fairly common and not unexpected, uh, especially for the, the mirror back there. And a lot of glass style of glass or acrylic style of elements are used in terms of the interior design. This is where you pass through to get into the main hallway. And you've got a lot of memorabilia here, lots of uh, pictures up on the wall. And those are just done with small window panes. And you've got another of the dark pink colored window, window pane over here and another one down here as well. Using dark green as well as the bright green color. Nice little design for the floor here done with tiling just like they did down below. And the only thing that's unfortunate about this as well as the space down below, no studs except for just around the edges, no studs for figures to really stand around here. I'll show you what that hole in the middle back there is, is about in just a minute. That's an important thing. But let's get through the rest of the interior here first. Uh, this is a kid's room, which is pretty complete and uses some more stickers for more detail. Got a fancy rocket style to the, the headboard back there. She does some art as well and has some toys up on the wall, maybe a lava lamp, uh, a car, her own bathroom. No, no bathroom for the adult in this, but this is the one bathroom I completely understand not putting in two bathrooms in the space because bathrooms do take up so much space. It's part of the reason that a lot of places don't have them in the world of Lego. And then there is just a sticker that's used for the detailing on the wall and the suggestion of a sink basin, but with no actual faucet to go with it. A little bit difficult to get access in here as well. Notice like if I want to put a figure into, into that, into that space and get it to sit down, like I got to go, I already knocked the hair piece off of it. It's you got to use like, you got to have tiny kid hands, fingers and, or, do finger gymnastics to get these in there. Like it's gonna need two hands, I think. It works, but it, it just saying it's it's a little bit cramped back there. It's also a little bit cramped in in some of the spaces around the edges. If you actually want to have a figure come up the stairs all the way, you have to pass off a little bit. And again, down here, it's really really difficult to to get figures around. So some of these areas have good access. Some of them really don't, unfortunately. Speaking of which this space back here I promised to tell you about. There's a little black platform right there, right now. You're supposed to put a mini doll on that. Best way that I found to do so is to have one arm facing all the way out and grab it like this and just carefully, carefully place it in there because there are no studs. And you gotta push it in and make sure it, it doesn't overlap the edges. Now, once you do that, this is pure magic pure magic because what I'm doing is turning a knob up here and it's using that Archimedes screw piece, several of them in there with some highly specialized uh, corner pieces like panel pieces and a highly specialized car, like an elevator car piece, which is brand new to me. I was surprised to see those larger pieces, but it gives you a very convincing elevator effect. As long as your fingers are small enough to get in there, you know, and you're careful with it. So you don't knock the, the person off and then down here, like, how am I supposed to get this person out? If I mean, even, even without, big man hands still like you have to be tiny to be able to actually grab that figure. That is, it's awkward. Speaking of, wait, what is this? Well, it's Andrea's basement recording studio. Of course <laughs> she records a lot of her own stuff or at least does some, uh, some test runs and does some, some voiceover work. It looks like she's doing her own editing though. Maybe that's how she started. I'm assuming she doesn't have to do that anymore, but if she wants to, that's all good. Nice little space down here. Uh, definitely could have used more studs on the floor to actually hold the, the mini dolls in, in place, 
but this just allows you to put more of them in there. You know, a little bit of a little bit of a trade off there, and also the, a lot of people like that nice smooth surface. Little uh, little bookcase off to the side there as well. If you want to see this just a little bit better, no problem. Even with big man hands, I'm able to pull that out. See, it's a guest bedroom as well. It was a converted guest bedroom turned into a studio and it still works as a guest bedroom, which is really smart. So you can have a, at least one guest, you know, friend who's coming from out of town, hanging out down there or, uh, you know, sleeping down there between partying activities. But this is this is a really good use of space. I like this. I like the verticality of it. It, it makes sense to me as well. You also have the window <laughs> that is a window into the into the pool. Unfortunately, it's underwater, so that's a little bit awkward, but at least this is getting some light in from the outside. And just generally, I like how this was integrated. And last but not least, let's go up to the top where I was using the knob to control the elevator. So this has a couple of, you just barely see it from this angle, but there are a couple of uh, solar panels up there. Again, just using stickers and then more foliage. This is nice. This is a little, little meditation and yoga space, which looks really yeah it, it, it looks pretty perfect and it's good for one person to be there and then one can be kind of kind of waiting or instructing but you see there's a, a tablet right there it's just a really nice space again with foliage with a focus on stuff that makes sense for an arid environment and then up here you also have this small pool with some koi in it so the koi pond hopefully there's a really really nice a really effective thing at the end to keep any of the fish from going off into that waterfall. I mentioned that waterfall, I showed it to you down here. Well, this is how it all integrates in, how it connects up. It's very pretty. It's a good idea, I think. I like it. And it's not, you know, it's a little bit dense here with the with the flora and fauna, but it's not too bad. And you've got a, a couple of jumpers used there as well, where you can put other things, connect other things, which makes sense. Once again, with the with the foliage and, and with the plants and going with colors that make sense. You know, you can see, you get some, like a little rock plant uh, back there as well on, on the other side using the, the hair piece. And then outside you can do some karaoke. So that's a little karaoke machine and another hangout space. So we'll turn this around. You can put at least two mini dolls sitting down there with, again, using glass for the, a lot of the decorations, glass or acrylic or something like that. And then you can have another one lounging here and this spins around just like the bed down below. So this person can be interacting with the folks here. Or if you have just one person there, you can just kind of turn towards the little artificial flame that set up, you know, a little frame, little uh, uh, flame rock installation, I could just imagine. So this is a good use of space. And the banister here is relatively short to just give you easier access and to avoid making it feel, I think, uh, too uh, too much like a prison, like too, too covered in. Like down here, you've got the, the taller banister, which makes sense, but the the farther you go up towards the top, I think that keeping things more shallow really worked out well and gave it a nice balance. Even though, if you think about it from a realistic perspective, I mean, that's not safe. That's not OSHA compliant, right? But in in the context of just a toy, I think this I think this works overall. Andrea's sports car is actually the very first thing that you build in this set if you're following the instructions from beginning to end. And it is very much like a, an old school speed champions car from the six wide days, just adopted for a friend's use. I, I like this a lot, a, a lot, a lot. It's a little bit short in the wheelbase, but it doesn't need to be longer. You know, it just would have been more realistic if it was longer, but I think this kind of actually fits with the the friend style they tend to have bigger wheels and, and and a shorter wheelbase overall it's just a shame about the back because this has some nice building techniques even though this isn't a this is not a super advanced like 18 plus set or anything but it has some nice techniques for some of the shaping genuine shaping with building techniques but not here so the back unfortunately relies mostly on just that sticker for its major detail but there's a lot of nice stuff going on with this a lot of interesting angling and i think it's very successful and has a nice color scheme as well i like that canopy piece in that color and there's even a full steering wheel not the minifig style steering wheel but this one i think works better with the mini dolls and you can open this up 
as well. And there's a little bit of space for some cargo. So evidently just gone off to a, a bakery and got the little, little uh, sign for the bakery and has gotten some donuts. Oh yeah, before we get to the figures, this is one thing that I forgot to post up inside of the house. Just a stuffed bunny, a large one with good quality printing on it and uh, the tan main color. Looking at the mini dolls up close, first I'm going to go through the original friends who are now grown up. So that's Andrea on the left, Stephanie in the middle, and Mia on the right. As usual, as has been the case pretty much since the beginning, these figures are printed incredibly well. The production quality is, is awesome on them. They're printed all the way around using techniques that Lego claims are physically impossible for their regular mini figs. And it's just not fair, <laughs> but you know, it's great for, for Friends fans and for folks who don't know or don't remember, all of the headgear pieces from mini dolls will work on mini figures as well. Here on the left is Olivia, in the middle is Emma, and on the right is, I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, that's Andrea's daughter. Yeah, Andrea's got a kid now. Her name is Imani. And those little mini dolls have been around for quite some time now, actually. And each one does not have a clip for a hand, but instead you get a mini peg uh, sized hole. So you can put like a flower or a bow or something in the hand. And also the outside is the exact size of a bar. So you could clip something over one of those hands. Once again, really good quality here. Good printing all the way around. I mean, just, just look at that. Just look, look at that torso. Look all the way around. It's so good. Strictly from the new crew here left to right are Jiwon. This is Autumn and that's Leo once again. Prints all the way around. I really like the metallic light blue color that they use. It seems to be exclusive to the Friends. Actually, you know what? No. Now that I think about it, it's not ex exclusive to Friends. It's just usually just so small when used on regular minifigs or, or other things that we rarely or barely even see it. But this is the most, you know, on the Friends figures, it's the most that you can see of it. And I just, I like it. And I would like to see more of that print used. I don't know why they keep it so limited, but maybe they have the reasons or maybe it's just circumstance. Also notice how the t-shirt is done here. That is not a dual mold. It's just a print that once again goes all the way around each of the pieces and the print opacity is good. The color match is pretty good too. Last but not least, this is Paisley with the dark red colored hair with plenty of space for it to fit around the shoulders of a minifig. That's why there's a little bit of extra room behind there, more than it needed. But they, they, the part designer really integrated in the shapes well so that I think the, the hair pieces most of the time look equally good on the mini dolls and mini figures. This one does have a noticeable mold mark on the top. That's that's one relatively rare for Friends mini dolls. Uh, kind of the miss on the quality control or production quality. There are a lot of small leftover pieces, including some very nice colors and you know, relatively special molds. I also had one of these to spare. I checked and checked again, but it was streaming. I might have been a little bit distracted, but these are just used for the the trunks of the last two main trees. I don't know if that was my fault or the instructions fault or production fault, but I had that left over, so I'm showing it to you. And this is what the sticker sheet looks like. Yeah, it's a bunch of stickers, but at least most of them are rectangular and thus relatively easy to apply. And only the biggest one has to be applied to something that's very annoying. The inside of or the concave space of a one by six by five panel piece. Don't enjoy that. Again, the price was $200 US. It is 200 euros. It's 170 pounds UK or 260 Canadian dollars for the 2,275 pieces with 10, not 11 figures, unless you count the bunny. $200 is a lot of money. There's a fair amount of stuff here, though. I think if this was in the creator expert range, obviously you would be more sophisticated in its design. But with that amount of stuff, it would it would be pushing it. It would be pushing the, the $200 range easily. 
it would be smaller if it was creator expert for the same amount of parts and everything you know it'd be smaller with a little bit more detail i i can i can kind of see it i don't think that the i don't think that the price is the problem with this set i'm looking for a problem because you know, obviously there are a lot of good things about it but i also had some some issues with it chief among them being just accessibility for us huge figures to get our our huge fingers in there. Obviously, I am not the target market for this set with my big full-size human <laughs> adult hands. Uh, so I, I'm a little bit biased there, but I can I can imagine what it's like to have smaller fingers. And some of these spots are rough, especially down here. That's really really rough on the patio next to the next to the piano. Not so sure about that one. I didn't make much of a fuss during the 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 other studio portion of it about the big pieces that that are the big very specialized pieces that are used for the elevator. I did make a big fuss about it while I was building it though. It really caught me off guard. They they definitely work the big pieces for the the, the elevator carriage itself and then the wall portions that include the basically a modified brick one by two by five is it is it five or six in uh five i think in in height with the little slot in the side used to be used for originally for garage door uh roll up garage doors to be able to fit in there that type of thing on either side and then a door frame built into it this is a big old piece i wish that they did not need to to do that because i i like genuine lego building techniques and most of this does use that i'm sure that those pieces help the elevator to be more successful because elevators are very difficult to do in lego things need to be lined up properly and if one thing is off by a little bit it'll be really really frustrating unfortunately it's still frustrating way the way this is built because it's in there they really should have had the elevator i think towards the edge maybe in the corner over here more where right where it turns or something something like that uh, to make it much easier because not only do you want to be able to access that but elevators are really important to see again watching that figure go up and down is it's magical for me as an adult today I, I very clearly remember it being very magical uh seeing things like that as as a kid i really liked uh elevator type things in in play sets so yeah this is this is a Big set has a ton of really cool features. Nice design for what it's going for. Great colors. It's very solid. It's easy to just pick up and move around. You know, as big as it is. Uh, great selection of figures. I really like this car. A little bit cheaper would have been nicer. Most importantly, better consideration of the human factors behind it. But those are my thoughts. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that this helped you to come to your own conclusions about it. And I'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.